Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank the, uh, uh, the chapter of the uh, structural heart disease for the invitation. Um, I'm a surgeon, a cardiac surgeon, and uh, I was given the talk to, of novel bioscaffolds in tricuspid valve disease. Uh, in tricuspid valve, uh, uh, there is hardly any data, so I have asked to change uh, the title to the right side applications. Uh, uh, at the Children's Hospital in Melbourne, we do a lot of uh, track speed valve surgery and track speed valve repair, and I can uh, will show you some slides and uh, we can ask some questions afterwards. Um, I have some disclosure to do. I am an advisor to Admedus. Admedus is an Australian company that uh, has developed a, and uh, distributes a, a patch of autologous, uh, a patch of uh, bovine pericardium uh, with a quite sophisticated chemical treatment. Uh, and I participate to the development of that product and another one called CardioCell 3D. Is the video on? No. Uh, so this slide, uh, it is important uh, to uh, notice that uh, either for the track speed valve or the pulmonary valve, there's a lot of material that is available for repair. Um, and what is, uh, th that choice uh, is available to the surgeon and uh, every patient has to be considered on its own right and the propriety of the, the characteristic of each patch uh, has to match uh, what you need for that repair. And so uh, you have to take into consideration the age, uh, the, uh, the type of the track speed valve or the pulmonary valve disease, uh, the flexibility of the, of the tissue. Uh, in that range here, the most important is the equal compliance. Uh, if you have very thin, very flexible valvular tissue, you need to use a patch that will be very thin and very flexible. Not a lot of patches would have that. Uh, uh, in particular, uh, the uh, Dacron, the uh, uh, core matrix, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the autologous pericardium treated uh, are more, uh, much more uh, uh, rigid than, than the autologous pericardium fresh, and uh, much more than the endocardium of the uh, right ventricle that we use for the Epstein anomaly. Um, in the main pulmonary artery and the pulmonary branches, uh, this, uh, uh, the range of tissue is slightly different, but you can see that it is quite wide. Um, what is important is uh, in the Dacron tissue is mostly used uh, and has been used in the past, no, not very much now, uh, mostly for the main pulmonary artery. It is very rigid and has a tendency to develop a, a very significant penis. Um, the pulmonary branches, uh, uh, it is a very difficult issue in pillary cardiac surgery. Um, the neonates uh, uh, are extremely frustrating material to work on in, in, uh, for the pulmonary arteries, the branch pulmonary arteries, and uh, the result is often uh, uh, unpredictable and the reoperation rate is extremely high. The best, uh, uh, the best Material for pulmonary artery branches in neonates uh, would be the Gore-Tex 0.4 millimeter and the autologous pericardium uh, fresh. Um, and then you have also the pulmonary wall, wall homograft. Uh, when the patients are a bit older, so from uh, infancy to adult life, uh, you can use a cardio cell, you can use uh, all of these uh, except for the autologous pericardium fresh, which is difficult to work with. So uh, talking about the cardio cell, this is uh, the bioscaffold uh, chapter of that talk. So the cardio cell uh, is uh, a bovine pericardium uh, that is treated with uh, a sophisticated uh, treatment. Uh, the first stage uh, is uh, the uh, treatment with uh, uh, the glutaldehyde. The glutaldehyde uh, has been used for uh, historically for treating all uh, um, pericardium patches, bovine, equine, uh, human, um, and uh, the glutaldehyde that is used is polymeric. So here you have a representation of one uh, uh, monomer of uh, the polymeric glutaldehyde. Uh, a, a, the polymeric glutaldehyde is a very long repetition of the same molecule. Only the, the red uh, dots uh, will link 
uh, to the collagen chain and create uh, the cross-linking. So you have in a very long molecule, you have only two extremities that will cross-link. In, 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 in the middle, you have that very long molecule that is unstable and will free uh, radicals that are able to capture calcium and uh, capture calcium irreversibly. Uh, so um, the key in the cardio cell treatment is to use uh, monomeric uh, glutaldehyde. And so that little small molecule will cross-link uh, at both uh, red extremities. And, uh, and this is done irreversibly. In consequence, um, there is uh, absolutely zero glutaldehyde in the cardiocell tissue compared to significant uh, in any other tissue uh, treated with conventional uh, polymeric uh, glutaldehyde. And this absence uh, of uh, zero glutaldehyde residual is uh, important into the characteristics uh, uh, and the, uh, the efficiency and the, the anti-calcification treatment. Um, the other characteristic is that the tissue is totally decellularized and uh, there is no DNA remnants and, and that has a very strong implication in the calcification. Um, in these four groups, you can see that the, the light green uh, is uh, the ADAPT or cardiocell treatment um, uh, and has virtually no calcification in the subcutaneous uh, uh, implantation in the neonatal rat which is uh, 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 extremely discriminant and very powerful. Um, so at the Children's Hospital in Melbourne, we didn't want to use the cardio cell before we had done an animal experiment uh, in the valvular position. Here you have uh, a, one cast of the Pumoy valve in uh, an infantile sheep model implanted for eight months. Uh, uh, and you see that uh, uh, patch is absolutely pristine. Uh, if you did the same uh, with a bowel prosthesis, uh, you would have a, a gigantic cauliflower of calcification. Um, what is important is that uh, you have uh, a uh, scarring process or a healing process uh, of the cardio cell on the right side of the screen, which is very regular and relatively thin. And so the whole scarring process co causes a thickening that is quite modest compared to the control autologous on the left. Um, this picroserious red is uh, a very powerful um, uh, staining of the uh, collagen and different uh, tone of red or orange uh, correspond to different class uh, of collagen and you can see that the patch uh, here the, the patch here is uh, very well organized uh, it is uh, uh, relatively old and stable collagen and this is a very uh, limited uh, and, and limited in height uh, scarring process, uh, but well organized. Uh, whereas in the autologous, uh, you have uh, a young collagen that is distributed uh, throughout the three layers. Um, the alternative uh, and all the bio scaffolding, uh, and uh, it is probably the one that was referred to the people who put up the program, uh, is a core matrix. Uh, Core Matrix is an American product that became available uh, about 15 years ago in the market. It is uh, quite interesting in the concept. It is uh, porcine small intestinal small, uh, submucosa. Um, it is not uh, uh, cross-linked. Um, it is not decellularized. It is sterilized, of course, uh, and there are three layers that are compressed. Um, and, uh, and this compression uh, causes uh, the resistance and the relative thickness of the tissue. But it is very flexible, and for that reason it has been used uh, as uh, a valvular replacement uh, and uh, has been used to construct a whole valve uh, out of a cylinder of that, uh, uh, which is a technique that can be used for any valve, for the aortic valve, the track speed valve, the mitral valve. And, uh, uh, so uh, the results have been extremely disappointing when the, the core matrix is a, a, a employed on the left side of the heart. At systemic pressure, you have ruptures and disappearance of the, of the tissue. Uh, on the right side, on the contrary, you have some good result with the replacement of the track speed valve using that technique of a cylinder. You can see the cylinder being constructed here. 
um, and it is attached to the three papillary muscle of the track speed valve, uh, and that creates uh, a cooptation uh, in, in systole that uh, you have a very high cooptation uh, uh, surface, uh, which gives a, a very good seal. Um, so that um, technique provides a satisfactory result uh, in good hands uh, in, in um, most of the patient, uh, uh, but um, in the midterm uh, or even short term, uh, you have uh, a significant proportion of, the, of this patient where you have complete disappearance uh, of the uh, core matrix. So um, there, is, uh, there is not a lot of pursued effort uh, with uh, that issue inside the heart. It is used mostly as a, a pericardial replacement uh, for the reintervention. Here I have, uh, we have collected uh, between the two centers that mostly use the cardio cell, uh, the uh, data from the, the, so the pediatric center in Brisbane and pediatric center in Melbourne, about 700 implants uh, between 2012 when it first became available and 2018, March. Uh, um, so the outcome variable uh, are all these ones. Um, uh, 500 procedures almost, uh, uh, 30 implants required reintervention at the site of cardio cell, and you will see the uh, statistical analysis. Most importantly, to uh, the take home message is that um, unless uh, it is a neonate uh, and in the pulmonary artery branches, uh, it works extremely well. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in the uh, um, in uh, uh, all other sites, uh, it, it on neonates in pulmonary artery branches, uh, the reimplant the re uh, operation rate uh, is quite high, about 15%, which is still much lower than uh, any other product that is available to us. So, so here the age group so in green is the adults or more uh, older than infants. Here that uh, between neonates and infants, and uh, these are the infants, and that translate the very difficult. Uh, um, uh, landing site that represent the aortic arch or the uh, pulmonary artery branches uh, in neonates. Um, and this is between the patch position, so the, these are, are um, intraventricular patches. These are the, uh, on the aortic side and these are on the pulmonary side, so these are mostly the pulmonary branches. Um, I'll give you some example, technical example of the patch implantation. This is the right ventricular outflow tract reconstructed. Um, this is a, a, a very severe, or uh, not torrential, but we say free pulmonary regurgitation in a tetralogy of fallow, um, 14 year old. Um, this is two years after a pulmonary valve repair using a cusp replacement uh, with uh, cardiocell. Um, in blue is uh, the regurgitation in the ventricle. Um, this is a, a tracker speed valve repair in a haboplast uh, two years after the BCPS. So no, two years after the repair. So uh, normally at the stage where the child should reach the, the fontan operation, you can see that the uh, ventricular function is quite poor. And so it's um, the world of uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Um, this is the, the uh, echo of that patient, uh, so that's two years after the repair, which is quite uh, satisfactory. Um, the uh, Nyquist scale is quite low. Um, some examples, so you have a taste of what is a patch uh, in the track speed valve. Uh, this is an Epstein valve repair. Here we, um, we calculate the height of the patch that needs to be implanted, and this is an autologous pericardial patch there. You can see that it has the same aspect, same consistency and pliability uh, than the uh, Epstein tissue. Um, this is another Epstein where you have uh, the native, uh, uh, native tissue is here. You have um, some uh, autologous pericardium untreated. Here you have some uh, endocardium of uh, the atrialized portion that is also used. And all that are very flexible have very good result in, in terms of long-term uh, um, functional uh, and flexibility of the leaflets. That's it. Thank you.